So you were the executive music producer and music supervisor on West Side Story. Uh, can you break down your responsibilities on the film and how you fit in with the rest of the music team? Cool. So um, the way I mean, the way I as a music supervisor and executive music producer, it's kind of a, I always compare myself to being like the captain of the ship. Always just kind of guiding, you know, uh, uh, the team and and the efforts and as creatively as well as organizationally. So it's like, like right from the beginning, it's uh, you know dealing with uh, helping out with casting, um, uh, just, and, and then once you get once we get our cast together, setting up, dealing with rehearsals. I uh, not only setting them up with my team, but I'm also sitting in and, and giving creative guidance and and my thoughts creatively of the direction. Um, and then we start gearing up all the music and the scores, get ready to pre-record the music and also vocals. So um, really starting, you know, getting the, the music into shape of how much music we need here and arrangements, working with Steven on, on this one, I was working with Steven with storyboards and, and uh, you know, what, what action's happening in, in, in each shot and therefore are we covered musically to, to, to achieve what he wants, to, the story he wants to tell in each song. And then uh, I'm on set every day, working with the playback, working with um, the actors. On the, I call it a little bit more like on set performance coaching. So it's so if, if we're doing if we're doing um, uh, like playback where people are singing along with the music, you know, lip sync, or if we're doing live recording, which we did a fair share on this film, working with uh, working with the actors on set for the live recording and the sound, making sure the sound is good, a good quality recording. Uh, and that they're, you know, in time with the music because we pre-recorded the orchestra tracks that they are listening to in their ears when they're doing it live. And then I, uh, then I follow through the team and, um, and kind of like the shooting is the aspect is kind of like, um, it's me and like maybe one other person on the set. But then in post-production, we bring in, you know, music editors, we they bring back the arrangers, uh, David Newman came back and started really final you know working out the edit with the edit of the film and then mixing a lot of mixing a lot of sitting in the recording studio and and you know we go back and finish off our recordings and post-production but a lot of mixing and getting it to sound uh which i you know which i think it's like came out really really beautiful and it sounds amazing in the theater yeah it really does um Okay, so so how did you get involved in all of this? I see the the guitar behind you. Are you are you a musician? I'm a musician. Yeah, I've been doing I've been doing uh, music for films for I hate to say this, but 20 years. <laughs> it hurts me. But uh, I got my start uh, working with uh, 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 with a the, the a music supervisor by the name of Maureen Crow. She and I started working together, and my third film with her was uh, was the film Chicago which I was on set every day for Chicago. And after that, I became kind of like the musical guy. I'm on like my 14th or 15th musical film. So uh, I've been doing it for a while and I've done a lot of it, but I'd say probably four or five years ago, I heard that Steven was doing West Side Story at Fox. And uh, so therefore any chance I could go into Fox uh, the 20th century and have a meeting about anything I would go in and have a meeting and I'd be like, at the end of the meeting, I'd be like, so anyway, West Side Story, you know, and I would, you know, I chased it and I chased it down and uh, eventually got in the room to meet Steven. Uh, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, I was, I really, really chased after it and I really, really, really wanted it. And I was very happy to get it. Oh, that's amazing. Does something draw you specifically to the musical genre over, over other genres of music? I mean, it's just, I, I grew up like watching musicals um, and, and going down to, I'm from New York and my, you know, my family, we would pop into New York and watch shows. And, you know, my dad was a, uh, my, dad, my dad was a cop, but he loved, but he loved musicals. He was a, you know, homicide detective, but he loved, mu he loved musicals. And, you know, and so we, it was a family, uh, I started playing guitar, uh, piano when I was about nine years old. So they, my parents really wanted me to be a, part of the music uh community and just and see it so watching west side story when i was super young i was uh, you know there i this the music is just so 
it's, I mean, it's, you become obsessed by it because they're, it's so complex, but also very simple in the same way. And it's really accessible to people. And, uh, it was something that I always, always loved. It was, and, and, uh, Stephen Sondheim's lyrics in the story and everything. It's just, it's just a, it's beautiful music with beautiful lyrics to accompany it, accompany it. So something I've always been, always had in my life. Sure. So yeah. that leads me to another question, which is how does the legacy of the 1961 film factor into the creative process of, of putting this one together? Yeah. Well, you know, it was Steve, Steven Spielberg's, our first meet, my first meeting with him. Um, you know, I think it was even our interview together when we first met to see if, if we were a good fit together was um, his first thing was, this is based on a 1957 like uh, Broadway show and the and the Broadway the cast album that he grew up with at I think he said he was 10 years old and uh and it was just it was something that he that he he loved and the 1957 show and so when we talked about the music and talked about we, we rarely kind of went back to the 61 movie we went back to the 61, the 57 source material, which the 61 movie was made of. So we, it was Steven's not recreation of, of something that's been done before for film. It was his interpretation and his reimagination of, of the Broadway show, just like they took their mute, their, their interpretation of the stage show. This is Steven's like interpretation inter and Tony Kushner's interpretation of the stage show. Sure, um, but you do have so Rita Moreno is who played Anita in the in the film is back in this as Valentina. Yeah. Uh, what was the process like of having her involved, and what was it like working with her? Well, you know, first it's like when I I knew she I knew she was being involved from the beginning, and uh, and I and uh, it came with the script that Tony Kushner wrote in uh, Rita as as in Doc's character as Doc's widow, and. You know, I just, I was like, okay, great. I'll get to work with Rita Moreno. This is amazing. And then it was, you know, she's going to be an executive music, uh, executive producer. I almost gave her my credit, uh, executive producer on the, on the show. And, and, you know, one thing is like, it wasn't a name only. It's, it's not like, oh, we'll just give her a producer credit. It was, she was there every day. She was there during a lot of rehearsals and she was on set when she wasn't even shooting. And a lot of it was this guidance of to these, our cast is like 16, 17 years old to 25. Most of them never been on film before. I'd say a majority have never been on film before. Obviously they didn't grow up in the time period that this, this show takes place of. And she was just ever present, uh, like encyclopedia and also just guidance for all these actors. She was always there, always giving guidance, always, you know, just really just, the rock of the show and I don't, I don't think we would have the outcome of that we had unless she was there. Sure and uh, I understand you made some some additions to the quintet version of tonight. Um, can you talk about what it's like to work with music that's so established and you know put to do something new with it? Yeah it's the like quintet um, it was you know it's it's you know, you're working with a set piece of music and, uh, and to, in order to get Steven's, uh, visual of it and, and getting it working from the beginning to the end and tell the story of everyone heading to this rumble, we had, did some additions and little, little, little tweaks to it, but I mean, not a lot, it's the same music. It's just kind of just a, a little bit of tweaks here and there. Um, this music is so iconic. We never really, we never wanted to change anything to the point where it wasn't Bernstein. And uh, so therefore we really stuck to, you know, what, what, if we had to extend, how, how should it extend that still feels like nothing, you know, somebody didn't come in and, and put pen to paper and, and create something different and new to it. Sure. Yeah. I was going to ask if that was a, a deliberate thing because you've worked on other film musicals like Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast that do add, you know, maybe one or two original songs. Um, so it was it was decided early on in the process not to touch the original music and just kind of present that as it is. 
Yeah, it, it, exactly. Like just comparing it to one of my last big films was was Aladdin. So in Aladdin, you know, it's we wanted to have Princess Jasmine to have a uh, a, a a song for her to express express her who she is and her frustration of wanting to be the sultan from being a princess. So we wanted new songs to help tell this story. And then also you'd have Will Smith come in as a genie and you're like, where's Will's strengths and where is like, where's his, what's he bringing to the role? So, you know, I added some hip hop drums and just kind of gave it, gave it much more of a driving Will Smith's feel to like friend like me and, and stuff. So that was that direction. But on this, it's like the music is perfect it's beautiful the original orchestrations are great it was we went from the 27 piece orchestra scores and we we then kind of you know set them to so we can have an 85 piece orchestra so that was the main goal and um and you really don't want to fix what's not broken so it's, uh, it's our main goal was to get the music sounding the best it can sound played by the new york phil the best that they that i think they've ever played it and um bringing Gustavo Dudamel to, to conduct them and, and, and raise it up, you know, something where they, it's the New York Phil, it's like, you know, it's Bernstein's orchestra. They've played this countless times and getting Gustavo to raise them up. You know, when you're, when you got Gustavo Dudamel and Steven Spielberg sitting in a room in front of the New York Phil, you know, it's going to be either, they're going to really, 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 really raise it up, raise the bar up. Sure. And you you said that that some of the performances were captured on set while others were uh, in time with the pre-recorded music. What mm -hmm. was the why did you like what was the the choice between when did you choose to have it be recorded on set versus pre-recorded? Was well, a lot of it was conversations between uh, Stephen, myself, and Janine Tesori, who is our our supervising vocal producer, um, and it really was my expertise in how, what's feasible on set, what we can do on set. Like for instance, you mentioned quintet, getting that cacophony of, of singing and, and all that, trying to do all that live is near impossible. A lot of ensemble vocals overlapping. It's, it's for shooting it on film, it's really, really tough to do. And it was one thing that we were just like, okay, that's going to be playback. But then you have like, say balcony scene, with Tony and Maria, and you have two performers who can really, 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 really emote to each other, and uh, and do it. There's there's something about pre-records. If we're shooting it on you know day thirty one, and you're pre-recording before, they may not be in t tune with each other uh, as characters yet, and and therefore once you live the life of shooting the movie, and on day thirty one when you shoot it, you, you go live, and it's just. It's just something that you really can't capture and pre-record. So that a lot of decisions of like balcony scene, a boy like that, and I have love when they're in the apartment together. I mean, that's all live. So there's so much, there's so much happening between the two of them that if you do it to playback, it's it, you just won't you won't it won't be the same. Sure, and the cast is so amazing in this as well so they're up yeah. to it um yeah like it's it's you know i i just say steven hired hired us a cast who can come in perform this eight shows a week on on a stage if they needed to um and uh therefore you know we just had to take them and just raise them up a little bit and and uh, get them used to shooting on film but otherwise he brought us a cast which was just impeccable sure and you you touched on this earlier but can you talk about the process of I think you did you did sketch ups and kind of plotted out all of the the musical performances in advance of of shooting. Can you can you talk about what that was like? Yeah, so so you know it's a compared to like a lot of big music numbers in films where you can set up like four cameras and shoot your fear all in one space. Um, it's it's you set up a lot of cameras, you shoot it, and you figure out in the edit room. This is very it's the 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 music itself is very dialogue driven and story driven. So it's scenes. And first we wanted to feel seamless that when you're going from dialogue right into the singing, that it feels as one scene. And, you know, you next, you know, you're there, people are singing and you, you know, people are in the audience are like, 
you, it's very, it's, there's, it's not jerky to them. It's very, very smooth. So we wanted that. And then since we're shooting it very linear, that the first three lines of a song is, you know, riff singing jet song in one location and it moves to the next location. So we wanted to storyboard out, well, Stephen wanted to, the, um, he had storyboards for everything. And then I, I worked as an assistant editor uh, and, uh, and he and I started shooting the storyboards and sending it to music, to the music, and then knowing where we were cutting. So when we went on the set, you know, I was kind of like, I was the encyclopedia on set of, you know, what we're, what we're, how we're shooting it and what, what we're shooting from beat, you know, beat one to, you know, bar one to bar 24. And this is the amount of, it is, it's 25 seconds long. And this is the, the, the you know, this is where the actor needs to move through and working with camera and sound and, and making all, it was really super helpful. So when we were on set, everyone knew that what we were shooting on those specific setups. Sure. And uh, just a few more quick ones, but sure. so, you know, obviously it's, it sounded like the answer to this might have been West Side Story, but if there was any other musical uh, after all the ones you've done, is there, if there's any other one that you could help transition from stage to film, uh, what, what else is out there that you would love to do? Um, you know, I, uh, right now I'm actually kind of funny you ask because I'm out right now kind of looking through and what's out there, see what's, what's to do. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if the timing works out for me, but I'm dying to see what they would, uh, what they do with Wicked. So it's, uh, so there's some stuff out there, uh, but nothing right now is, that is uh, really talking about. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, okay. And finally, is there, is there something else that you are working on right now that you can talk about? Sure. Yeah. So um, right after we finished this one, I went to uh, England earlier this year and shot uh, Disney's Pinocchio with uh, Robert Zemeckis. So going from Spielberg to Zemeckis is a very much a pinch me moment. I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is really happening. So, um, so we're, I'm working on Pinocchio with Robert Zemeckis for Disney, and uh, it's so it's so good. And I mean, working with Bob Zemeckis, who's another brilliant filmmaker, it was, it was really exciting. And then I'm also then I went to Ireland and we shot um, Disenchanted, which is the Enchanted sequel with Amy Adams, Patrick Dempsey, Adina Menzel, James Marsden. So awesome. that is, uh, we're um, deep in post-production on that one right now. So it's uh, really, Alan Menken and Stephen Schwartz wrote more great songs that are just incredible, uh, really incredible. So wow. yeah, it's fun. Well, it sounds like there's a lot to look forward to. And yes. uh, congratulations on West Side Story. Thank, Thank you so you. much for taking the time to talk about it. Thanks, Alan.